Hey what's up everyone welcome to another video this is the second part of the video series with Nitesh who is studying masters in software engineering at CMU like always i'll leave the timestamp right here so you can skip to any part of the video you want to in this video we talk about the coursework itself what is like studying in software engineering what kind of classes do you have to take uh, assignments programming quiz uh, projects etc in the next part we talk about how we got internship at SAP and lot more fun stuff in the next part Nitesh if you're watching this thank you so much for doing this it means a lot to me and our ud squad community last but not the least i'm very grateful for all the love and comments you've been giving me in my recent videos thank you so much for that and if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing now i will let you enjoy the video let's do a quick round of uh, well currently i'm in pittsburgh and, uh, and i'm at cmu doing my masters in software engineering um i kept coming from mumbai in india and in pittsburgh well as everyone is, I'm going through online education as everybody is. Yeah. Okay. And so now let's talk about your coursework. Like, uh, tell us a little bit about like, you know, what is coursework? You completed two semesters. Uh, how mm -hmm. has it been so far? What did you learn? And kind of what kind of courses did you take? Professors. So I asked a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the coursework. Yeah. So the coursework is pretty interesting. So the course, uh, so it tries to bring on people who already know how to code. Mm -hmm. and try to make them good software engineers so what how do you what do you mean good software engineers by that they mean uh they need to know stuff like requirements gathering so how do you understand and clarify and get requirements properly so yeah. there was we had this one course wholly based on requirements in the first semester what wow how that's do you, so cool uh, so yeah that is very interesting what what so give like i'm i'm very interested in that because that's something I do as a scrum master, I work with product owner and we work mm -hmm. on requirements gathering so much. So mm -hmm. what, like, what did they teach you in that? So they uh, made us work with use cases. They made us work with feature diagrams and they also, uh, let me recollect the project one second. Um, we had, we had this whole, uh, we were given this particular product and we had a, so we would make a presentation on this, how this product would work. We would build use cases. We would uh, build how the flow of the product would be, and then we would present it. And then there would be questions from the audience, who would be the client basically, and how would this work? How would that work? And then we would improve the whole product based on that, and then gather fresh requirements, and then whether so the requirements are clear or not. Yeah. But and, and that requirement gathering is is based on software engineer or is it based on business side? Based on software engineer, definitely on software engineer. So okay. how would you interpret each requirement? Did you interpret it properly? Did you assume certain things or did you not? Or what wrong assumptions did you make? Where is it right to assume? Where is it wrong to assume something? And, and, and so, so the, this product you had, I'm assuming your professor came up with that product. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you have questions about requirement, would you go to the professor to get the clear out or like how did that work? Uh, yeah, you either go to the professor or the TA. Or the TA, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That is so cool. I mean, and I'm assuming there's, there was no coding for that. It's, it's probably. Yeah, there was no, it's, it's completely about uh, having, it's a complete simulation of how it happens like requirement yeah. for software engineer that yeah. that is in very i can see why you said how this coursework is making you ready for industry because yeah. that, that's one of the big struggles software engineers have uh, like you know when i work with my team uh, they will assume so many things like a uh, product owner did not say that but <laughs> They're like, yeah. oh, that's probably how customers would use it, or that's how users would use it. Why mm -hmm. wouldn't they not click here? Like, <laughs> no, they don't click that because that's how they don't work. <laughs> so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's cool. What, what, give us some other examples of coursework uh, you had. Uh, so, so this was one course. We had another course called Management for Software. So a lot of people had come in without much experience working, like you said, in the Scrum. So I had no idea what the Scrum was and or what even Agile was. So there's a course called Management for Software Developers. So they teach you, uh, they actually do a complete simulation of how a Scrum works. One person would be Scrum Master and there'll be requirements, you split them, then you draw this product map wherein as uh, you split it into tasks. and like what user you put, stories. User stories, yeah. Sorry, yeah. User stories. <laughs> and you put it on a Kanban. That's my job. So I, I yeah. Can. 
<laughs> we can talk about this yeah yeah, yeah so you uh, put it on uh, you move things from in development uh, or something code stuff, review, and then, yeah, code review yeah code review and then you move it through stages yeah and so, so they used to make us do all these interesting activities and they used to give us a feel of how it is actually working in so, that sort of environment how we plan things and, and, and did uh, you like did you actually develop something or was it just all simulation no we didn't develop it's just all simulation so oh. there was uh, also this how would you allot time to each a uh, sort of user story so there's there are methods on how to do this, something called mask moscow method of allotting time to each user story yes, how would you I do know it that. yeah uh, so the one of our professors came up with that who was teaching us oh really yeah, yeah. people who don't know what is moscow it's a it's kind of a way to prioritize uh, the list yeah, of list. backlog items for a product and mm -hmm. uh, um, it's like must have, should have, could have, will not yeah. have. So yeah. it's very easy for product owners or product managers to remove something like, no, this is, you know, for example, if I want to develop an app and and uh, I want a video conferencing, but that's like, no, that will we'll not have that because we don't need that. Or must have is that there should be a ch chatting feature. So that is must have. So that's kind of what we are talking about. Sorry. For people, I'm, I'm just giving context for people because they mm. will be like, what the heck are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So even I, since I think some people who have work experience, they can relate to it. But I, there were people like me who came in without uh, not a lot of full time experience. So I think this yeah. is very useful for them. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, this yeah. I, I love the coursework. So, so was there like, did you learn any kind of programming? Uh, were there programming classes? No, yeah, there were. So basically the course, so that was an elective that I took. But okay. in the code, there's not much programming classes because they assume that you know how to code. Okay. You, you are a coder, you know how to code. Let's take you beyond that. Stuff like oh, that. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, what, uh, how many core courses and how many electives do you have? Six, uh, six or seven core courses, and I'm allowed uh, two electives, and I have a whole uh, something called a studio project at the end, mm. uh, in the next semester, basically, where it's a complete simulation. You have a client, and you work in a team of four. Uh, you you choose which sort of development you use. You have it's like a complete simulation of how you're working in an actual right. work environment. Right, that you will be developing. Yeah. And and if you need a product idea and or want to build something, let me know. I have some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, but I think uh, it's mostly uh, based on um, so other departments, like say the CMU robotics department has a product which they wanted wanted to have mm -hmm. built. So they come yeah. up to us and they're like, here's a studio project for you. Or some other department needs something, so they Got come it. to us and they're like, you can do this as a studio project. Got it. Yeah. So that that is I, I love the coursework I mean you know that is something I would be very fascinated to was there any like algorithms data structure object oriented programming none of those none of those I took it up as an elective so I was afraid of how it would be so uh, I was not I mean I was not academically very good in my undergrad so I was a little bit afraid of how it will go so I took up an easy elective in my first semester which is data structures and algorithms because I've already done that. <laughs> and so the course was quite simple because most of the things I've already done, the assignments when assignments were a little bit difficult, but it was fine. Give us an example of how was a, uh, an assignment in data structure and algorithm? I, I think it, it started out with simple stuff, uh, like uh, I'm guessing stuff like linked lists and things. And then uh, they each data structure they started coming out with, they were like, implement your own linked list, create your own linked list, and it should have these, these, these functions. And mm. that started out simple. Then it went into trees, implement your own, do an, your own implementation of a tree, do yeah. your own implementation of a graph, which does oh, uh, okay. like DFS, DFS, and all like, these things, search like, in a graph. And Yeah, the most difficult, the one I took was uh, red, black, trees oh my god that was <laughs> horrible I'm, I'm assuming professors are awesome and you know yeah, yeah 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 i'll tell you an interesting fact actually you know dystrus algorithm right yeah so the so the professor who taught me one of the courses his advisor was dystrus advisor so like, <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> so cool yeah we we even we went in class like whoa so this guy was dystrus basically next generation next to next generation like, wow. yeah 
Wow. Most of the professors have their own offices and there's usually never a crowd or a line sort of people waiting for. Right. Uh, so this, if there's 45 students only, you each week you wouldn't expect more than three or four or five students approaching the professor. So yeah. The yeah. professor usually ends up give, giving time to each one. Nice. And professors are actually really helpful. Yeah. Now let's get into the final part where people are waiting for. I'm, I'm waiting for because I want to know personally. You had so many job offers. When did you start your internship search? So uh, the whole procedure started when I was in India. So what? I 